Here is another viewer requested video. The viewer wanted to know how you could make the scissor trusses work if you had a situation with an angled wall. So our wall here is going to be at a 45 degree angle. And in the first part of the video, I just kind of want to show you how everything would work out if you just simply used the existing scissor truss design in hopes of it making a little more sense to what we're actually doing. Now I also want to point out I am not going to provide you with step-by-step -step instructions on how to frame the walls. However, if you do need that or if you are interested, then let us know in the comment area. And if I see that enough people are interested, then I will definitely make another video. And here you can see where the fascia board is going to be cutting through the roof rafters or the trusses. And again, I'm just kind of giving you an idea here of what it would look like in hopes that it will make sense when we modify the roof trusses. So let's go ahead and do that. Zoom in on it here and take a look at what we actually did. And I went ahead and cut the roof trusses at the ends square because I would imagine that's what most of the roof truss manufacturing companies would do. They're probably not going to cut this at a 45 degree angle. And you might have a few more studs in here or support studs, space 16 inches on center if necessary. And the top pitch on the roof is a 4 and 12. The bottom is a 2 and 12 in our example. And this rake wall here and this rake wall here can be framed at a 2 and 12 pitch. And of course our lookouts here to add support. Now I went ahead and moved this over a little bit because this piece of fascia board here is going to have enough structural support from these trusses here or the overhang on the trusses to support this area and this area. However, you could always add an additional lookout somewhere down here if needed. Just keep in mind that we're not getting any support here from the ridge and we'll need to have some supports closer to the ridge. For example, if this was a conventionally framed roof, then the ridge would come all the way out to here and we would have enough support for the ridge here. We might not even need this board. So something to think about when you're designing your project. Let's go ahead and remove the fascia board. Take a look at our blocks here that are shaped. And this might not be a possibility for your project. And if it isn't, then you might need a block at the bottom and a block at the top. But something like this is going to provide us with nice boundary or perimeter nailing that we can use to transfer down to the wall. And if you notice down here, I added a small block because we're not going to need a large one here. However, you can always continue the shaped block all the way down. I just wanted to provide you with another example. And of course, we're going to need some straps here to tie the wall framing plates together. And that will be at both sides here, this side and this side. And the reason why I don't have a block here is because this block here will be enough to cover this area here. And we'll provide you with another view of that here in a little bit. Next up, let's go ahead and remove the trusses to give you an idea of what the blocks are going to look like or what they could look like. Pan out here. Let's go ahead and install the trusses again and then take a look at our blocking here. Now these blocks here might need to be shaped. I actually shaped them and they have about a three or a four degree angle on the top and on the bottom because they are at an angle in a couple of different directions. So I will leave that up to you if you want to get that complicated. I have done this before where I just use a regular 2x4 and that's usually going to be close enough. So we're going to miter the block down here and this is going to be a 22 and a half degree miter. Another view of the blocks there. What they look like from the bottom. And of course, the reason why we don't need a block here, but we might need a block here for our stucco or siding. And let's go ahead and wrap this video up by installing the fascia board and the sheathing. And again, this video wasn't meant to provide you with step-by-step -step instructions because the viewer was someone who knew what they were doing. They knew a lot about construction. However, they haven't ever seen something like this. And I would also like to point out that your truss manufacturing company might be able to provide you with a little more detailed information about building something like this. However, I would like to point out 
out that I've dealt with situations like this and you as the carpenter, you're going to have to figure it out. And you might also need to modify the trusses or they might not be located at the exact on-center spacing that you would expect them to be also.